Okay, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 4, called More Balanced Moves. So let's rewrite some more equations while keeping the same solutions. So today is about rewriting equations again. So here we go. First one was different equations, question mark. Equation 1, x minus 3 equals 2 minus 4x. Which of these have the same solution as equation 1? Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So when I take a look at equation 1, if I was to again rewrite this real quick here so I have some space to work with, and I rewrite this out like this to solve for x. I could add 4x over here, and I'm going to choose to do the 4x because I want to get a positive x here, 5x. And then I add 3 to this side, so 5x, and so sorry, plus 3 plus 3, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. If I divide both sides by 5, I find that x is equal to 1. So I'm looking for ones that have a solution, and the same solution of x equals 1 in this case here. Um, I could solve them all out if I wanted to do that to see which one's going to have this value of x equals 1. I could also take a look at this because here's we're talking about we're looking at balanced moves. This isn't really asking to solve, we're talking about keeping things balanced. That means doing something to one side that I do to the other side to keep it balanced out, okay? So I really don't even need to worry about solving, it's just a question of am I balancing things? Again, going back to your hanger idea, if I add a triangle to one side, I need to add a triangle to the other side to keep things balanced. So let's take a look here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just write the equation up over here. I have x minus 3 equals 2 minus 4x. Okay, so looking at equation A, what's happening on this side right here? What do we notice? One thing I notice is that the x is going to a 2x and the 3 is turning into a 6, which tells me, at least it looks like, I'm multiplying everything here by 2 is what it looks like. If I take that 2 and distribute, I get 2x and negative 6. Is that what I'm doing over here? Let's take a look and double check. 2 times 2 is 4, check. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So yeah, this is going to be the same. And what I'm doing is I am multiplying both sides by 2. That's all I'm ha that's happening there. This is the same equation. I have just done, <coughs> I rewrote them by multiplying both sides by 2. All right, let's take a look here. I had again, x minus 3 is what I started with, equals uh, 2 minus 4x okay that's what I started with now notice that the x stays the same from the here to here the negative 4x stays the same so what's different what's different is I'm subtracting 2 subtracting 2 from both sides when I subtract 2 here that goes away and what happens here becomes a negative 5 so I subtracted 2 from both sides to keep the equation balanced and rewrite it in a different form. Okay, let's look over here. Here I have, again, I start with x minus 3 equal 2 minus 4x. All right, so what's going on here? Well, let's take a look here. Well, this one's a little more, <coughs> a little different. Well, a couple things. I can see that this x minus 3 went to that side and the 2 minus 4x seems to be going to that side, except it's a little different. Because if I have a 2 minus 4x, if I was to take a 2 out of everything and basically do the distributive property, right? I'm going to take away a 2. That becomes 1 minus 2x. And so we can see that that's what's happened here. We've changed sides of the equal sign and used the distributive property to then rewrite that one. It's the same equation. Okay, and then finally over here we have x minus 3 equals 2 minus 4x. We can see that our whole numbers, negative 3 and 2, are staying the same. So what's changing is we are subtracting x, subtracting x from both sides, so that we end up with just the negative 5x. So subtracting x there. Okay, over here I should write down distribute and switch. <laughs> All right, so. Nothing has really changed with these equations. These equations are still the same as the first equation. We've just done something to each of them on both sides the equal sign to make them balance and write them out in a little different format. And that's really what today's lesson is about and what you're going to practice multiple times. Let's look at number two. Step by step by step by step. Here's an equation <laughs> and then all the steps Claire wrote to solve it. Here's the same equation and the steps that Lynn wrote to solve it. So they do this and this. Are both their solutions correct? Explain your reasoning. Well, let's take a look here. 
So we're just checking their work. And this is an important skill. You will have to be able to do this most likely on your end of the year type of tests where they'll give you things to say on which line was there an error made. So you're kind of looking at step one, step two, where was there a mistake made in the process if there was a mistake made. So they began in the same, all same spot. First of all, Claire combined her X's. 14 minus two is 12, that's good. And everything else came down. And then Claire decided to take a three out of everything here. So that became a three, we take a three out, and three, 12 divided by three is four, that works. And three divided by three is one. So four X plus one, that matches that, perfect and perfect. And the reason she did that was so that if you divided everything by three, that's gonna go away, so that's dividing by everything by three, right? This is distributed property here, we combined here. So that's good, and then we can see she put the four X over there, perfect, to get one equals X plus nine, and then she moved the nine over there, one minus nine is negative eight, and that is great. Okay, no problem, good job. For Lynn, <clears throat> we see that combined that, that was the same, and then Lynn decided to do distributed property, to get the 15x there, no problem. And then, <clears throat> in this case, move to three over, so 27 minus three is 24, good. And then move the 15 over, negative three, that's good. Divided both by negative three, x equals negative eight, and that's the same. I would agree that both are correct because they did the right steps and didn't make any computational errors. They're good to do that. Describe some ways it took the steps that are alike and different. <clears throat> Again, they started the same way by combining the X's, 4X and 2X, um, but they did some different things by, by doing distributed property here by turning that into one on the outside, and here he multiplied his out, or she did. So they all work. <coughs> just different ways of going about solving a problem, just keeping things balanced while you do it. Let's take a look at May and Noah. <clears throat> Get a drink. Mm -hmm. So Noah also solved the equation, um, but some of their steps have errors. Find the incorrect step in each solution and explain why it's incorrect. So let's see what they did. All right, we have <clears throat> 14 minus 2x to 12x, so that we put to there, that's good, no problem. And then let's see what happened next. Went from 12x to 7x, huh? Oh, look with this. So what's moved is, May decided to take this 5x and slide it over to here. The problem is you can't do that because this is inside the parentheses. When it's inside the parentheses, you have to do this inside before you can take it in the outside. So you could distribute and then move, but you can't just suck something out of there. You can't take it out of the parentheses. It's against the rules of math, okay? So the error was made right here, and we would say <laughs> this is your starting point, right? And this is step one, and step two is where the error was made. For Noah, let's see, 14 minus two is 12, that's good. And then Noah decided to do distributed property right away as well. So three times five is 15, three times nine is 27. So that all looks good. So step one, check, no problem. And then what happens? Well, then we're putting the, oh, 15x over there. Well, 12 should be 12 minus 15, not 12 plus 15. So our error happens to be right here. And again, step one, step two, that's our error because he added 15x. It should have been subtract 15x, and that's why it's wrong there. Okay, so they each made mistakes in different spots, and that's what you have to kind of watch out for when you do these problems too. Make sure you're being very careful to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. So here are three different problems for you to try and see what you come up with there to solve these for x. All right, again, different ways of going about it. I'll show you how I approached it, and then you can, if you have a different way, that's great too. You might wanna take a look at yours, look at a neighbor's, and see what you did, what they did, in different ways, again, all right. So, my first step is I said, well, let's play with these numbers because there's no x's. So I thought five minus nine, five minus nine is a minus four, and minus four, negative four over two, ends up being a simply negative two. So this whole thing can be rewritten as a negative two. So that becomes 12 plus six x over three equals negative two. 
Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 because that will eliminate the 3. So I have 12 plus 6x equals negative 6 because it's negative 2 times 3. I will subtract 12 from both sides so that I have 6x equals negative 18. Divide both sides by 6 and now x is going to equal negative 3. Okay, those are my steps there. Could you do it differently? Absolutely, that's just what I chose to do. On this one here, what I want to do is I see a fraction there. I want to get rid of the fraction. Now the way I get rid of the fraction is I'm going to multiply everything by 3, right? So that means I multiply that by 3. That becomes 3x minus 12. And I multiply this by a 3. So 3 times a third is simply 1. So that goes away and becomes 1. And I don't worry about what's in the parentheses because I have to do the outside first. So the parentheses part just comes down now by itself. 6x minus 54. So I distributed a 3 across everything. Each one of these variables here and what was outside of there. Now I can combine like terms. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, keeping it balanced. So that becomes 3x there. I can also add 54 to both sides. So 54 and a minus 12 becomes a 42. Now I can divide both sides by 3 or thinking about it as multiplying by a third. Same thing. And that becomes 14 equals x for number 2. All right. And now over here. For this one, first thing I wanted to do is I'm going to multiply by this negative 1, right? So I'm going to multiply and distribute that out to rewrite this as negative 3x. And negative 1 times a negative 12 is a positive 12 equals 9x minus 4. Now, again, I like positive numbers, so I'm going to move the 3x over here so that I have 12x there. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides, so I have 16 equals 12x. I'll divide both sides by 12. And 16 divided by 12 can be reduced to 4 thirds, and that's what x is equal to there. So x equals 4 thirds. All right, next problem here. Let's look, are you ready for more real quick? Since we have a lot of problems today. It says I have 24 pencils and three cups. Way to go, three cups, 24 pencils. So it's like this, cup, 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 all equal 24 so far. The second cup, holds one more pencil than the first cup. All right, so we have our first cup is cup plus the second cup, which is gonna be the first cup plus one, All right? That's what that's gonna equal for cup number two. The third one holds one more than the second cup. So the third one's gonna be, this was cup plus one plus one, right? Because it's the first cup plus the second cup plus one more. All equals 24. That's what we have so far. So we have three cups, plus one, two, three, equals 24. And we subtract three, subtract three, three cups equals 21, divided by three, divided by three, and the number of cups, is, number of pencils in the first cup is seven. So the first cup is seven, which makes the second cup one more, and the third cup one more than that. So seven, eight, and nine for our cups there. And that's the basic of today's lesson, just trying to make sure that you solve things correctly, look for errors when you do subtraction and addition stuff, and that's your summary. Let's move on to tonight's homework and see what we can do with some more balanced moves. May and Tyler work in the equation 2 fifths b plus 1 equals negative 11 together. May's solution is b is negative 25, and Tyler's is b equals negative 28. Here is their work. Do you agree with their solutions? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, let's take a look. There's a starting point. We can see that May decides to subtract 1 from both sides to move the 1 over. If you subtract 1, right, to get rid of that, negative 11 minus 1 more should be a negative 12 right there. And she wrote down a minus 10 and that's where she made her mistake. So that's the error there. Tyler, what did Tyler do? Okay, Tyler said, he said, I'm gonna get rid of the two fifths. Okay, to get rid of the two fifths, he multiplied everything by five. Okay, now if I multiply everything by five, I multiply this by five, I multiply that by five, and I multiply that by five. Well, <laughs> this part's fine, good. But the one, what happened to the one? 
Uh-oh, I can see he did the 11, that's good, but he forgot to multiply that by five. That should have been 2b plus five equals negative 55, is what that should be. Whereas over here, she should have 2 fifths b equals negative 12, is what that should look like there. Could they solve it? They could, um, but you know they both got it wrong. In this case here, we would subtract five, and 2b is gonna equal negative 60, divide both sides by two, and b is gonna equal negative 30. So that's what their solution should have been, but they both made a mistake here and here, and that's where things went wrong for them. Number two, solve this problem here. Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and it can, a couple ways. I could distribute first, or I could divide by three. Up to you. I'm gonna divide everything by three, divide by three, so that I have x minus four equals 12 divided by three is four. Okay, I'm gonna keep my x as positive, so I'll subtract x, subtract x. So I have negative four equals three x, divide both sides by three, and so that x equals negative four thirds. And that's all I gotta do. Again, different ways you could approach that, but your answer is gonna be the same. Number three, describe what is being done in each step while solving the equation, okay? So to go from here to here, we can see that we are distributing there, all right? So distribute the two. All right, now from here to here, we can see that the eight stays the same, the two stays the same, so we're moving the six x over there. So we are adding, uh, or yeah, adding six x to both sides, okay? Got it. Now to go from there to there, we can see we're moving the two, the 11 x is the same, we're moving the two to there. So we are subtracting two from both sides. And then here we are getting 11 by x by itself. So we're dividing by 11. So you attribute the two, add six x, subtract two and divide by 11. And those are the steps that I get there. Now I could say divide by 11, or I could say multiply by what? One over 11, okay? So you could say that for either one of those. Okay, Andre solved the equation, which is on my other page, but when he checked his answer, he saw his solution was incorrect. Ah, happens like when you do your homework with me, right? He knows he made a mistake, but he can't find it. Where is Andre's mistake, and what is the solution to the equation? So let's take a look at what he did, let's find his mistake, and let's get Andre the correct answer so he'll feel like, hey, he can do it. The good thing with this is when you look at this, Andre did a lot of things right, right? There's a lot of good things that he did here in this problem. He just made one little mistake in the middle of it, and we can find that and correct it, but he did a lot of other things really well. So let's take a look here. We did distribute negative two times three is negative six. Negative two times negative five is 10, that's good. We distribute the four and x, and four times three is 12, and the eight's there. So everything looks good right there. Here, he kept those the same, those the same, and then he combined 12 plus eight to get 20. That looks great right there. No problem, I have no problem with that. And then, let's see, he's gonna keep the whole number, so we're moving, we're moving this over to there. Okay, so we're moving that over there. So if I do that, I need to do the opposite. I need to add six x, add 6x, okay? So think about it like this. He has negative 6x plus 10 equals 4x plus 20. He needs to add 6x to both sides. So that becomes nothing, and I have 10 equals 10x plus 20. And so he did four minus 6x to get minus 2x. So this is where the error is actually at. That's his mistake right there. Okay, that one thing, a lot of good things, just that one little thing there. So let's subtract 20, subtract 20. So we have negative 10 equals 10x. We divide both sides by 10. So negative one equals x is our solution. All right, so that was it, no problem. Five, choose the equation that has solutions five and seven and eight and 13. Okay, well, so we gotta figure out which one works here. So. We have to plug it in and take a look to see what's gonna work for us. So we have to do it for each one. So on the first one, this is our X, this is our Y, here's our X and here's our Y. So we would say three times five minus Y equals eight. So that's 15 
minus y equals 8. 8 minus 15 is negative y equals negative 7. So that means y equals 7. Does that match there? It does. So that's good. But what about the 8 comma 13? Well, we have to do 3 times 8 minus y equals 8. Check number 13. This is 24 minus y equals 8. 8 minus 24 is going to be a negative 16. So negative y equals negative 16. So y equals 16. Does that match? Nope. It doesn't match. So a is not going to work. And we have to do this for every single one of them, okay? So that was the most annoying one. So <laughs> let's plug this in. If we plug 5 in there, 5 plus 2 is 7. Matches. Good. Yay. All right. Plug the 8 in there. 8 plus 2 is 10. Not 13. Doesn't work. Nope. Doesn't work. Over here, we plug in the 5. So y minus 5. So 5, to get that over there, if it's a minus 5, we add 5. That becomes 10. Does that match a 7? Nope. Doesn't match. And D, we plug a 5 in here. We get 2 times 5 minus 3. That's 10 minus 3, which is 7. That matches. Good there. And over here, we get 2 times 8 minus 3. 2 times 8 is 16 minus 3 is 13. And that matches there. So check. That's the only one that works there. So there's a whole bunch of math in that one problem. You just have to keep plugging them in. So basically, I'm doing 8 math problems in one. Lucky lucky you okay the length of a ribbon it's cut into two pieces to use in a craft project right so here's ribbon cut into pieces the graph shows the length of the second piece x for each length of the first piece all right so let's take a look at what that is that ribbon cut it and there's your second piece so if the first piece starts at 15 there is no second piece and when we cut it one time, we get a length of one foot there, which means we take away from the first one, right? So it's like this. You're starting off with a length of ribbon like this. That's what you have. Now, when I cut this off and go cut, 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 <laughs> cut that off, now I have this one and this one, okay? If I cut it again, chop, chop, chop there. Now I have this one and those combined together to make this one. Okay, so my overall length won't change if I add the two together and this is going to work all the way down until I'm left with just one little bit left here and a longer amount there or finally till I have everything here and it's just what I have uh, left. So here's my graph. How long is ribbon? How do you know? We're going to look at where we start at. Before I make any cuts, the ribbon is out here at 15 feet long. So it starts at 15 feet long. The slope of this line is how much am I going down and over, down and over. And we can see we're going down one and over one. So my slope is negative one is my slope. Explain what the slope of the line represents and why it fits a story. Well, what this slope represents and why it fits a story is that for every foot I cut off of my first piece, every foot I lose, I, the second one gains. Okay, so there's a, a relationship there. The change of the second length right connects to the change of the first length so when this one gets one foot longer if I add one foot here this one gets one foot less and that's the way that works if this was to get three feet longer then this would become three feet less so depending on the cuts whatever I do to the first one impacts the second one which also still of course impacting the first one that's it for today have a great day and we'll see you next time